Okay guys, let's talk about circular dichroism. This is a very interesting topic and uh, this is uh, somewhat technical. So, let us talk about this is for uh, the chemistry students as well as for the biology students. So, what is circular dichroism? Circular dichroism is, uh, is a type of spectroscopy process uh, to understand the structure of macromolecules and also charged particles and how the charging, discharging occurs. Actually, it is nowadays vigorously used in, in, in understanding the structure of uh, proteins, understanding the structure of secondary structure, tertiary structure of proteins. It is extremely helpful to understand the secondary structural motifs of the proteins as well as it is important for understanding uh, nucleic acid structure, lipid, majorly proteins and nucleic acid structure. It also help us to understand uh, the structure of any any optical uh, optically active molecular chiral molecule actually. So, what is circular dichroism? For understanding this circular dichroism, we need to understand how light moves, you know, light moves in two, uh, two different way, like one is a wave, another one is a particle. The wave movement or the wave motion of the light, if you look at here, the vector, right, uh, when it moves, like the normal, in case of the normal polarized light, that is called the linearly polarized light, it occurs when the electric field vectors oscillates only in one plane. For example, you know, it, it only oscillates in one plane. And usually, that's called the polarized light because, you know, all the other oscillations are getting cancelled due to some reason. That is called the polarization. That is the linearly polarized light and it, it should have a particular direction uh, of the movement, right, in all these cases. You know, there are two types of vectors are there. One is the two, mag two types of magnitudes. One is the uh, electric, another one is the magnetic. Two fields are there. But if you look at the electric field here, the vector always oscillates in one plane in towards one particular direction. That's the linearly polarized light. But in case of uh, circularly polarized light, what happens? The electric field vector rotates about its propagation direction. And what it does actually, it, it rotates and while the vector retains its its constant magnitude but still it it start to rotate so as it is rotating it will look something like this so so simple like this so this is the direction it will rotate this rotation can be of two different type one is you know clockwise another one is counterclockwise two types of rotation is there usual thing is that when the circularly polarized light rotate in you know, clockwise direction, right, it creates right circularly polarized light or RCP. For the left circularly polarized light, it actually rotates that vector in counterclockwise direction. So, for the right, it is clockwise, for the left, it is counterclockwise. Now, if we look at the basic understanding of circular dichroism, we can see here. Now, say, let's say here it is. Uh, the circularly polarized light, right? It is consisting of both the direction, the right and left handed circularly polarized light. Both these lights are traveling, right? Because it is a photon beam that is traveling from one place towards a particular direction. Now, let's say this is the optically active sample, uh, which uh, we want to uh, know the structure of the sample. For example, we don't know the structure. So, we put that sample in there. Now, as the photon beam is passing that through that sample, that sample is changing this polarization pattern and that's what is detected by the detector machines, right? For example, here you can see that photon beams, the left-handed and right-handed circularly polarized light are completely kind of equally participating here in the photon beam. But now once it is passing through the optically active molecule, then in that case we have seen that the left-handed circularly polarized light, that is the, the, the right-handed circularly polarized light, that is a red one because, you know, for the right, it is rotating clockwise. As you can see, red one is rotating the clockwise, so it is a right-handed and green one is the left-handed. So, you can see here the right-handed light is now very, very short. The left-handed polarized light is very, very long now. That means, that means, what, what does that mean? It means, the preferential absorption of the right-handed polarization, because both the polarization are kind of equal at the beginning, once it is passing the optical active sample, the left one remains more, but the right one is getting very less, because the right-handed polarization is absorbed by this sample, by the molecule we are studying. And looking at this type of pattern, we can actually draw a graph 
not we actually detector produces it and uh, it, it, it is feeding onto the monitor, the computer screen and finally we see certain graphs and by looking at those graphs we can tell what kind of molecules we are dealing with, what is the structure of that molecule. For example, if you look at here, the left circularly polarized light is termed as, the absorptivity of the left circularly polarized light is termed as AL, for the right handed it is termed as AR and the difference between this polarization status is denoted with AL minus AR, denoted with delta A. So that is, that is uh, the formula for understanding, for calculating uh, the difference in the absorption that we have seen here. So if you look at here, the actual uh, diagram of how uh, the schematic presentation, let us say this is the monochromatic light because you know we need to have a polarizer to make it polarizing and also we have a monochromatic light because we do not use you know multiple sources, we use only one type of source of light that is the monochromatic light consisting of only one particular wavelength. So if you look at here that monochromatic light passes and it passes through you know it is consisting of both of these things you know left handed and right handed circularly polarized light but once it is passing through this optically active sample and then it is detected by the PMT detector. And if you look at here in the PMT detector, we have the thing, we have two different bands, one is the circular dichroism band, another one is the HV, right. So if we look at here, actually the circular dichroism is simply the difference in the spin angular momentum state of the pho photon, that we can see, right. So if you look at here, we get a typical characteristic pattern, right, because in, in, the, in, the, in the Y axis here, it is denoted with the uh, epilepticity of uh, this light because that is uh, the change on the rotation is denoted here, right. So if by looking at the CD spectra, we can actually tell that what kind of structure that molecule have. For example, if you look at here in this particular diagram for a protein structure, you will find that this black dotted structure, this graph is showing us the alpha helix. So if you put the protein more with alpha helix, or the domain of protein with alpha helix will get a band like this. If we use a beta sheet containing region, it will give us the different type of band like that. For the random coil, we get another type of band as you can see in the green color, right. So you can see the unique feature of rotating the circularly polarized light or absorbing the circularly polarized light over the other one, left or right, whatever, will give us the idea of the structure. That is what the basic of circular dichroism.